Okay, last... Last bit, I think. Okay, so just heads up, there will be a point where I have to stop um, recording. I might just do like a voiceover or something. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm I'm thinking about it. Um, yeah, because I'm not allowed to record plus content. And I'm going to have to deal with that. Um, yeah, whatever. So yeah, um, there will be a point where I have to stop and then I will let you know what happened, I guess. Olympus was closed for today, so it feels weird for this many people inside. Chelsea tagged along as well. Did you get all your clothes out of there? Asks Kevin. I shake my head. Some of my models were wearing them, but I couldn't find them after the fire. Do you think they'll return the dress? Sarah looks hopeful. I'm not sure. I'll give them a call tomorrow. I'm sorry, Valky. It's all my fault it ended this way. Chelsea looks really guilty. It's not your fault. I scoff. No, it's not. It's Thomas's fault. Don't blame yourself for someone else's actions. Yeah, but they cancelled the entire thing, I heard, she says in this sad voice. It's true, Fashion Week is officially being cancelled. The venue had suffered too much damage to continue operations, so officials thought it was best to cancel the rest of the week. Don't feel bad. No one expected this to happen, Sarah butts in. I definitely didn't, and Kane even threw down? Kevin looks impressed. Kane, who's been quiet this entire time, raises his eyebrows. Huh? Yeah, he used some kind of judo move and slammed him down. I sound way too excited. You mean you weren't lying about taking judo? Sarah raises her eyebrows, ge genuinely taken aback. <laughs> Kevin chuckles. Wish I could have seen it, to be honest. It, it wasn't anything special, Kane mutters, towing his foot against my counter. Way to go, Kane. You've got some moves. Sarah slaps him on his back. Ow, watch it with that bare strength. He growls at her, feigning hurt. Yeah, thank you, Kane, for standing your ground and protecting me from Thomas, Chelsea says quietly. Everyone turns to look at her. That was very brave of you. Awkwardly, Kane diverts his eyes and turns away from the rest of us. I told you, it's nothing special. He really doesn't do well with compliments. Sarah stands up straight as if she suddenly remembered something. Hey, Kevin, let's get out of here. We can take Chelsea home, right? Confused, Kevin stumbles over his words. Yeah, we can? It's fine. I can get home by myself. I appreciate the offer, though. Chelsea politely uh, declines politely. She walks up to the front door, standing still as she presses down on the handle. Really, thanks everyone. She disappears from the boutique, the bells chiming melancholy as the door closes. Okay, well, we've got stuff to do, Sarah claims. We do. Kevin doesn't seem to understand what Sarah is talking about. She elbows him in his side. Yep, I seem to recall you owing me a favour from last time. Ah, you don't need to say that out loud. Kevin quickly shuts her up and his, fa his face gradually turning crimson. Do I even want to know what Sarah is referring to here? No, no, I do not. Sarah pulls Kevin along with her towards the front door. Let me know when you get those clothes back from the models. She and Kevin quickly dis disappear from the boutique. I sigh out loud. She wanted me to be alone with Kane. No matter how much I try to ignore it, this conversation between us needs to happen. It's got the worst timing in the world, but I can't keep running away. Crazy day, huh? Kane shrugs at me. I lean against the counter, looking down as I contemplate what happened today. It's hard to focus. My body is still suffering the after effects of the adrenaline from before. Not to mention the fear I felt from thinking I'd possibly lose, uh, lost Kane in a fire. I never want to see you do something so stupid again. I sigh as I cross my arms. I make no promises, he replies nonchalantly. I tap my foot hard against the floor. Kane, I lecture him. I'm serious. Seeing my expression, Kane simply stares at me in return, his mouth tightly shut. Fine, he grumbles. I run my fingers through my hair, taking in a deep breath. There's no escaping my emotional turmoil. How to address the elephant in the room? I need to drink something. Let's go upstairs, I motion towards him. Oh? I walk towards the back room and Kane scrambles to follow. He really does stand out like a sore thumb. Huddled near the door, holding a glass of water, looking as if he'd rather be a part of the scenery, like the rest of my decorations. I'm sitting on the couch, my fingers wrapped around a warm cup of tea. Come sit and stop being weird. I'm not being weird, he huffs. Kane fluffs up a pillow before he sits down next to me. It's the first time I've been here. No, it's not. Remember the reunion? That doesn't count. I saw your tiny bathroom, but not the rest. I roll my eyes at him in this pointless conversation. Taking a sip of my tea, I wonder how to start, how to formulate all my wandering thoughts into words. It's hard to express myself. It's difficult to convey to Kane that he's really hurt me with what he's done. And yet I'm still absolutely crazy about him. There's no denying that. Stupid heart of mine. Couldn't you have fallen for someone who's less of a dick? Kane impatiently taps his finger against the glass. He's practically squirming in his seat, not able to withstand the silence between us. You know... I place my cup down on the coffee table. 
For someone who kept trying to reach out to me, you sure don't have a whole lot to say now that you have the chance. Kane's eyes flicker towards me, a worried expression befalling him. He's scared. Just like me. I... He starts softly, but his sentence fizzles out. The sound of our breathing fills up the room. It's so quiet. He puts his glass away as well and clasps his hands together, head bowing down so that ha hair covers his eyes. It's clear he doesn't know how to start. Not that I do either, but someone needs to bite the bullet. I read your post, I mention. Oh, I didn't think you did. We return to being quiet. It's suffocating. He used to be unable to shut up. Conversations between us were effortless. Yet, now look at us yet look at us now, unable to form a coherent sentence. He leans forward as if to speak, but then halts, remaining still. Kane clenches his hands on top of his knees, taking in a deep breath, slowly exhaling, exhaling the air from his lungs. Clearly, he is too nervous to start speaking, afraid of how I might respond. This is stupid. Unable to endure this painstaking silence, I grab the pillow from the couch and fling it at Kane's head. He's caught off guard as it hits him in the face. It silently falls onto his lap. What the? He cries out indignantly. Irritated, he grabs the pillow, perhaps intending to strike me back with it, but he doesn't. He just glares at me. That's what you get for being a jerk, I explain myself. I grab the other one off the couch and toss it at him again. This time, Kane deflects it with an annoyed grunt. Do you really want to start a pillow fight? Because I can give one to you. Kane throws the first pillow, pa pillow back at me. I dodge it by standing it from the couch. You're lucky they're just pillows, I stress. You deserve so much worse. Shark briefly flashes across his face. He knows it's true. But then he grits his teeth, eyebrows lowering down to a glare. Then give me all you got, he bites out, preparing himself for an onslaught of hurt. I raise my right hand in the air, causing Kane to turn the other cheek and close his eyes. There's this tiny part of me that wants to hurt Kane for hurting me, but it's silly and hypocritical. I can't stoop down to that level of pettiness, so I lower my arm. No, I stay simply. Kane cracks his eye open, wondering why I haven't slapped him. No, he repeats, confused. I'm not going to hit you. You make no fucking sense, you know that? He huffs. Says the guy who's been trolling people online, I fire back. Not knowing how to reply to that, he simply glares at me, the fire returning in his eyes. So how long did you know it was me? I tap my foot against the floor. Kane looks down, the day you came over. Am I supposed to believe that? You may as well have been fooling me this entire time. I wasn't. Kane gets up from the couch, this time at eye level with me. It might be hard for you to believe, but I didn't do it because I knew it was you. Kane shakes his head. Fuck, if I knew it was you, I'd have never... But you did it. It doesn't matter if it was me or not, you wrote those words. You, Kane, not anyone else. Not Thomas, not Chelsea. You wrote those nasty messages. That's when his expression falters. Guilt consumes his face. I know, he admits, his eyes softening. A deep breath, then a pause. Kane's eyes glance over and meet mine, but he doesn't hold our gaze for too long. I was in a really bad place before I met you, he says with a sigh. Kane plops down onto the couch again. As you know, I was a friendless loser in high school. Chelsea and Thomas made sure to make my life a living hell. He hangs his head down. I really was, I was really damn lonely. I slowly sit down next to him, keeping my silence. It's time to let him speak. The only place I could be myself was online, he chuckles painfully, but even there I got rejected. He's talking about that time when I told him to post in the right place, no? I was pissed, lonely and angry, and I took it out on the last person to get on my bad side. Kane's eyes make contact with mine, you, he admits. I became a nasty version of myself, falling deeper into this shithole called depression. His voice is dripping with self-loathing. Chelsea was right. I did anything so I could feel in control again. I'm exactly like the, like the ones I despised. His eyes glance over to mine, softened and weak. I ended up hurting the only person I cared for. I can't deny the surge of emotions I feel bubbling towards the surface, begging to be let out. No matter how hurt I am, every cell in my body is begging me to forgive him. I lean in, stroke his head and say, it's okay. Uh, to lean in, stroke his head and say, it's okay. You entering my life is probably the best thing that's ever happened to me, he says with a boisterous laugh. You weird, stubborn girl who wasn't afraid to call me out on my bullshit. Okay, I resent that. I'm not weird, I interject. You made me realize I could be better, that I could be happy. A slight and defeatist smile tugs at his lips. I'm always so fucking afraid of everything, anything, that I'm going to mess it up, that everyone's going to hate me. I didn't want to get close to you. I didn't want to be friends with Kevin or Sarah. But you're so damn stubborn. Ugh, I'm not, I protest. And I love that you are. Wait, what? My mouth hangs open in shock. Before I knew it, I was always thinking of you. What's Valky doing now? Is she working? Is she sleeping? Who's she talking to? Then, a more restrained and bashful expression. Does she think about me too? Chills reverberate through my body. My pulse quickens like a fast-flowing river during a storm. Am I allowed to feel this way? I'm just some loser and you're this awesome person with friends, a career, and talent. The total opposite of me. 
It took me a while to realize I'd stopped posting my stuff online. I was just browsing. I, I wasn't angry anymore. Instead, my mind was filled with you, he admits, blushing slightly. What are you trying to say? My heart is thumping loudly. I'm trying to say that I think you're really cool and pretty and stuff. He blocks his glowing red face with his hand. Kane telling me he thinks I'm pretty and cool while hiding his blush blushing face is turning me into mush. I royally fucked up, and I don't deserve your forgiveness, he's pouting this time. But I promise I've changed. You changed me. I'm not that asshole anymore. I'm so, so sorry for saying those things. I regret it so much. I regret who I was before. I'd like you to give me a second chance if you don't absolutely hate my guts by now, because... Because... Kane's eyes get all twitchy and panicky, unable to look at me any longer, his cheeks gradually turning a darker shade of red. Eventually, Kane picks up one of the couch pillows and holds it up in front of his face, holding it away from me. <laughs> His voice is muffled against the pillow. Sorry, I didn't quite catch that, I say, leaning in closer. I said because I love you. He repeats, but it's still hard to understand. Seriously, you just stop mumbling into the pillow. I snatched it away from him. Kane stares at me in shock, his expression raw and honest. He doesn't have anywhere to hide anymore. Well? I press him. Uh. Again, he's lost the ability to speak. This is getting tiring. I hit him over the head with the pillow, fluffing up his hair. Hey, he cries out crossly, can it with the pillows? And I don't have all day until you finally learn to speak again. Really? You can't wait two seconds? God, you're impossible. Just come out with it. Fine. Well? Shut up, I said it's because I'm in love with you. Oh my god, my thigh hurts. I've been leaning on it really awkwardly and I've got my... <laughs> okay, I blink at him. Kane's face is at first stoic until his cheeks matches the colour of his hair. Wait, what? I ask, bewildered. He turns his red face away from me. Don't make me repeat it. He then snatches the other pillow and squishes his face into it, muffling whatever incoherent mess he's rambling at, at the moment. <clears throat> it takes me a few seconds uh, it takes me a few seconds to register, but then his words sink in, in my face, knowing my body is ablaze with the heat rivaling the sun. I'm sure Kane could make a great space pun out of that one. A cyan-coloured eye pops up from behind the pillow, he's still using it to mostly cover his face. Now's a great time to say you hate me and don't want to talk to me again, he mumbles sadly. Hold on, you can't just drop these bombs on me and expect me to immediately roll along with them. My mind is spinning. Kane just confessed to me whilst asking for forgiveness. I'm actually so happy right now, but I still have things to say. Just reject me already so I can move on with my life, he grumbles as he pulls his legs up to his chest, hugging them for comfort. He looks so sad and dejected like this. And why is he already deciding I'm going to reject him? That's a little infuriating, to be honest. I can make up my own damn mind. Okay, first of all, rude. Don't put your feet on my couch. I tap his legs, making him put his feet down onto the floor. Seriously, I poured my heart out to you and you're thinking about your couch? I hold a finger up to his mouth and shush him. Second of all, I can make my own decisions, thank you very much. Don't presume to know what I'll say. This time, it's Cain that's impatient. Well? He asks, then what are you going to say? What you said to me, as an enemy, it hurt. I start in a serious tone. I posted my work and immediately I get these awful comments from some stranger. Of course your comments escalated into being downright hateful, but I have to admit, I have such a hard time accepting any kind of comment on my work that isn't downright praise. While you were being a jerk about it, your first post was actually kind of right. Came bites down on his lips, surprised I would admit such a thing. And that time when you said it to my face, I got stupidly defensive about it and even turned it into a childish fight. I shrink into myself. Sometimes I can be childish and stubborn, but I like to think I can improve, to admit I've made mistakes and move on. I flash a smile at him, but I'd be a pretty big hypocrite if I didn't grant you the same courtesy. Wait, are you saying you'll forgive me? Kane's eyes are wide. He doesn't believe it. I cock my head to the side. Eh, uh, I mean, I still feel like you need to earn my forgiveness. Suddenly, he's up on his feet, bold and without fear, standing in front of me. Anything, I'll do anything, he claims. Anything? I repeat, a smirk progressively creeping onto my face. Yes, he confirms. Maybe some more groveling would help. Kane falls down on one knee, bowing his head towards my legs. Please, Valky, I know I've been st stupid, vapid, an idiot, and just an asshole in general, but I don't want you to hate me. I fake a scoff at his groveling. Hmm, I'm not feeling your sincerity. Beg some more. For a split second, I can see Kane flash an irritable snarl. But immediately he closes his eyes with an exasperated sigh. Taking my hand in his, he kisses the back of it like a prince. I, Kane Prince, am asking for your forgiveness, he mumbles. My heart flutters rapidly. I can't help but giggle. 
Wait, your last, your last name is really Prince? I honestly had no idea. I feel like we heard it before, didn't we? Or was that Neil's route? He pouts at me. What of it? In that case... <laughs> Make, making a dude who's, whose stuff is dominant is great. In that case, I stick out my foot, kiss my feet instead. Kane drops my hand like a hot potato and gets up with a flustered face. Fuck off, no way. I laugh maniacally. It's fun to bully him around a little before I let him know I've forgiven him. Sort of. You're enjoying this, aren't you? He snaps at me. Of course I am, it's payback. Kane growls at me, but he knows he's got no leg to stand on. I'm allowed to enjoy this a little bit more. You're impossible to please, you're smug and you love to torment me. I have no idea why I like you. Are you taking back your confession? My eyebrows raise as I get up from the couch. Maybe I am, he defends his position. I take a step closer to him and can see him vis visually gulp. Really? When you don't even know my reply? I say in a sultry voice. His eyes flicker away, powerless to meet my gaze head on. Then what is your reply? There's an adorable pout on his lips. Stop toying around with me. Listen, if we ignore your little online adventures for a second here, then I can safely admit that. I swallow. But I'm smitten with you. You drive me nuts in a good kind of way. I reach out to that fluffy hair of his, plunging my fingers inside his mane. Kane's frozen on the spot, eyes wide and mouth open. I think even though you can be a jerk sometimes, you can be rather cute and sweet when you want to be. And you're really brave. For some reason, when it comes to yourself, you're unable to speak up. But when it comes to your friends, you turn into this lion. I giggle, fierce and protective. But also stupid for getting my collection out of a damn fire, I sigh. Excuse me for being stupid, he grumbles defiantly. I push some hair behind his ear and give him a soft smile when I notice the tips of his ears have gone red. My own heart won't quiet down, neither. I love the way you blush, I admit. Kane flinches away from me, his entire face now flooding with blood. Don't say that straight to my face, he stutters. I thought you wanted me to be honest. It just feels like you're taking the piss out of me. He fiercely tries to hide his blushing face away from me. It's no fair, I'm the only one being affected like this, he grumbles. I cut both his cheeks with my hands, forcing him to look at me. Kane, does it look like you're the only one here? I search those gorgeous eyes of, of his. It's not like I haven't been blushing either. I sound composed, but I'm anything but. I'm running on a high dose of sh sugar rush. He stares at me, afraid at, and at the same time also curious. Do you think I just kiss people without having feelings for them? I question, still keeping his face in between my hands. I don't know. You're my first everything. And you're mine. So what are you saying? I'm saying I'm in love with you too. And before I can give Kane the time to process this, I cover his mouth with mine in a quick and dirty kiss. I silence his protests and muffled yell, pressing my lips hard against his. I'm savoring this brief moment where our lips are finally touching. Then I finally let go of his face and retreat. For some reason, I can't look at him to see his reaction. I feel exposed, vulnerable. Awkwardly, I wipe my mouth and hope it isn't possible for my heart to spontaneously combust into flames. I've had enough fires for today. You're not just saying that, right? His voice is quiet and soft, almost a murmur. It's tinged with uncertainty. He can't tell whether I'm honest. Don't make me kiss you again, I mumble shyly. Kane slips his hand into mine and knocks his forehead against me. I hate the word. His fingers graze the inside of my palm. Yes, it's the only way you can really. Blah, 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 blah. His fingers graze the inside of my palm, a little bit nervous and a little bit brave. My skin prickles with static, as if I've entered a small field of electricity. Perhaps J uh, Kane is generating it. No, he speaks slowly. Don't stop. Oh, there we go. My breath catches in my throat. I know exactly where I need to stop this. So. My breath catches in my throat as Kane boldly captures my lips, gently pushing me down onto the couch. There are no more traces of uncertainty in his actions, though I can certainly tell his body is shaking. And maybe that's me. I can't keep up anymore with Kane's smouldering hot lips begging for my attention. I lean back against the couch as he straddles me, our lips never breaking apart. There's an intensity between us that's rapidly spinning out of control. A strong and pleasurable emotion suddenly gains momentum inside of me the longer I kiss Kane. I have to swallow my own gas when Kane pulls my bottom lip down with his thumb and enters my mouth with his tongue. I eagerly greet him, our tongues twirling around together, no, each other, leaving me breathless, but I can't take a break. The urge to continue kissing him is too strong. I feel so lightheaded. Our teeth clink against each other when Kane puts a little too much enthusiasm in kissing me. We break apart for only a moment and I put my hand against his chest, grabbing a fistful of his sweater. Don't stop. Don't leave. Please let this continue. Don't look at me like that, he murmurs. I boldly gaze into his eyes and tighten my hold on his sweater. I refuse to break eye contact. Then how should I look at you? I fire back. I have no idea what kind of effect you have on me, he says breathlessly. He bears his face into my neck, kissing me there. 
You're so cute, he whispers before barraging me with kisses. But if I swarm inside me, bouncing around like they're high on drugs. He sucks right below my ear and I squirm beneath him. My heart throbs almost painfully and I pull Kane closer to me by tugging on his sweater. I can't get enough of this feeling. Can't get enough of Kane. Then his lips leave my neck and I feel naked. I stare at him, incapable of hiding my disappointment. But seeing Kane like this, untethered and open towards me for the very first time, a look that should be illegal. I love you. I'm madly fucking in love with you. His words are out of breath. I want to curl up and scream. He cups the side of my cheek. It feels so warm and safe. Valky. His voice is like heaven raining down upon me. I want you. Everything. Can you forgive me? Of course I can. I already have, I say out loud. Then Kane wraps his arms around me, pulling me in for a very intense hug. It's bone crushing. Thank you, he chokes out. I cling onto his back as well, nuzzling my nose against his collarbone. Everywhere he's touching me feels like I'm still back at the fashion show, too hot to handle. I don't deserve this kind of happiness, he admits in a shaky voice. I'm the luckiest guy on earth. His sweet words have me yearning for more. I definitely love him as well. I'm so glad it's out in the open. I forgive him for his past mistakes because right now, this is the real Kane, the one who's hugging me, declaring he's the luckiest guy on earth, all the while trembling and blushing. Kane, I call for his attention. I need to breathe. He relaxes his arms and sheepishly pulls back. Right, sorry. He looks so adorable right now, I can't take it anymore. Kane, on the condition that from now on you'll be a better man, do you want to be my boyfriend? His mouth falls open. Yes. <laughs> then he laughs out loud. It's such a magical sound. I want to hear him like this every single day. Fuck yeah, I do. Fist pump. Like, you know, the, it's a short guy thing, isn't it? Fist pump. I'm kidding. Before I know it, he kisses me out of joy, soft and gentle. His happiness is pouring into me. I smile up at him, then kiss him back. This has been such a turbulent day. Thomas showing up, Kane throwing him down, a literal fire breaking out, and now this. Kane asking for forgiveness and telling me he loves me. And I guess now he's my boyfriend. Funny how things work out. I'm not even mad I can't participate in Fashion Week. Uh, or that my models ran off with some of my clothes. I'm right where I want to be. Da -na 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 -na. I assume this is the epilogue. And let me just see where this goes. I don't think I can show this though. No, I can. I can. You are something fierce. The camera whirs and the flash goes off. Look at that exquisite detail. Multiple flashes fire off in rapid fashion. I oversee my creations walking down the impro improvised runway. A sense of accomplishment wells up. A few photographers are standing at the end shooting pictures. There's a lot of onlookers who came to stop and watch the show as well. Fashion week was cancelled due to the fire, but I already paid for my models, so I might as well use them at my own boutique. Sarah and Kevin are outside at the end of the runway, taking pictures. They helped me set this entire thing up. I'm so grateful for them. Okay, the blogger I contacted, MCK, came to see you as well, says C uh, Chelsea cheerfully. She checks off a name on her list. She's huge among women in their 20s, you know. Chelsea, being a fashion blogger with a surprising number of followers, manages managed to invite some high-profile bloggers to come watch the show. I believe only one didn't show up. She thinks out loud, oh well, look at the turnout. She's right, there are so many people gathered around to watch the models walking down the small red carpet. Thanks a lot for this, Chelsea. I thank her. Don't mention it. I mean, it's my fault that everything got so out of hand. It's not fair to you. I shake my head. You couldn't have known Thomas was going to be there, much less that it would cause a fire. Don't beat yourself up over it. What's done is done. She flashes me a small smile. I can't believe you threw him down. I guess I under underestimated you a little, she says, turning towards Kane. Oh. <laughs> He's wearing my jellyfish dress, styled in a cyan wig as well. One of the models bailed out on me, so I had to improvise. And considering Kane really owes me, I asked him to fill in. After all, he's the perfect height for a model and skinny to boot as well. Call me little one more time, he threatens defiantly. She didn't call you little. She said she just underestimated you. Anyways, you ready, Kane? You're my star piece, I say, turning towards Kane. We are even after this, yeah? Kane grumbles. Don't worry so much, Kane. You look fabulous, reassures Chelsea. Are you mocking me? It sounds like you're mocking me. Relax, Kane. You look pretty. Now go strut your stuff down the carpet and show me how much you love me. Kane turns bright red. I will not. That's stupid. I place my hand over my heart, feigning hurt. Ah, Mr. Menenemy, you hurt me so much. How will I ever cope? Kane flips the wig out of his face. Ah, oh, fine. Stop being dramatic. Good luck. I cheer for him. Oh no, not this music again. Kane drags his feet over to the carpet, huffing in annoyance. I know he's being a pain, but I can tell he'd do anything for me. The thought alone makes me feel super happy. Okay, Kane, it's your turn. Go, says Chelsea as she pushes him onto the runway. 
Kane stumbles around on his high heels, but starts walking down the carpet. Once the audience spots him, they all gasp in response. Wow, magnificent. Look at those strings. Are they made out of fiber optics? Looking good, Sarah cheers, snapping a picture. You're making everyone jelly. Kane is too focused on walking in a straight line to get annoyed by Sarah's comments. All the other models walk back inside, leaving Kane alone on the runway. He strikes a pose at the end, closing his eyes as everyone snaps pictures. Then he turns around and walks off the carpet without tripping over his own feet. I hurriedly grab his hand. One more round, I say, as he's looking at me all confused. All the models line up and start walking down the carpet one last time. Kane and I are at the end, walking hand in hand. Like this, I feel like the world is mine to take. Cheers and applause erupt as every single one of my designs appear. It's a sight to behold. It may not be fashion week, but I'm having a lot of fun with my friends all around me. I wave at Sarah, who smiles at me and shoots a picture. Kevin gives me a thumbs up, holding his phone horizontally as he's shooting the entire thing on video. Chelsea makes sure to herd all the models back inside. I couldn't have done this without her help, either. And then there's Kane next to me, wearing my dress and a wig, because that's just the kind of person he is. What he was once before, that's ancient history. It's funny how things work out. We stand at the end and I bow in front of my audience. Thank you all for coming to see my collection, Ocean Stars. I stand on my toes and lift myself up until I can plant a kiss on Kane's cheek. His eyes widen slightly, but then he chuckles at me. He releases my hand, instead wrapping his arm around my waist and pushing me up against the dress. Please give a round of applause to Valky Hearth, he yells out loud. The audience claps loud and hard. I feel myself blush at their adoration. I feel humble in front of them. But I'm also very proud of myself. I may not have joined Fashion Week, but I still got to show off my collection, not to mention drum up a ton of press for Olympus. There's something powerful about turning around and walking back inside with Kane next to me, and my friends cheering me from the back. Yeah, I got this. It's buzzing inside as the models are getting undressed. Kane is the first to waggle away, complaining about one of the strings being stuck between his butt cheeks. I stay behind with the rest. I'm handing out business cards left and right. People are congratulating me on my show. Fashion bloggers and influencers are sticking around, chatting with others. Chelsea assures me that they'll be leaving reviews on their blog, which should hopefully get me more recognition in the fashion world. I think that went great. I've got a lot of good pictures of your models, Sarah nods at me. I have it all recorded as well. I'll be posting it on social media. Everyone loves to see an underdog still going through with the show despite the fire. Kevin seems excited. I'm glad you helped me out. I don't know how I could have pulled this off on my own. A sense of accomplishment and pride wells up inside me. Fashion week may have ended in disaster, but I've got great support from my friends. So Kane, should we be giving you a stage name? Sarah jokes. Kane, who has quickly undressed and gotten rid of the wig and makeup, glares at Sarah. She, he doesn't seem amused. How about Sparkle? She chuckles. Great idea. I'll go with, I'll punch you in the face instead, how's that? Regardless, I think you did great for a first time model, Kane, says Kevin earnestly. Oh, God. I don't want to be complimented on that, Kane grumbles. It's nice to see you did it for me anyway, I say. Of course, he stammers, looking slightly embarrassed. Anything for his girlfriend, right? It's not Sarah. She and Kevin already know that Kane and I are together. Kane balls his fists at her, and Sarah stares him down with a smug smirk. I don't want to hear that coming from you, who has him literally whipped. Kane angrily points at Kevin. Kevin turns to stone. Sarah leans into Kevin, roaring with laughter. But at least Kevin admits it. Kevin says nothing at all. His red face speaks a thousand words. Maybe, he admits quietly. I end up laughing at their antics. I think that Sarah used to fall for bad boys like Kyle, and now she's done a 180 by going for Kevin, who is so pure of heart. I'm happy for them too. Everyone sticks around for a long time, sharing stories, laughter, until one by one they leave the premises. Soon enough, I'll be seeing blog posts and other reviews popping up about my Ocean Stars collection. No one could have predicted the things would turn. No one could have predicted the way things would turn out this week. Kane revealed to be my online tormentor. Thomas showed up at Fashion Week and starting a f and started a fire. My friends helped me stage a fashion show. Kane confessed his love for me. Yep, didn't expect that at all. Okay, well, this is still not where we need to end. Let me just quickly check. In Kane's route, when MC is in the bed at night and Kane starts to text her, that's where we need to say au revoir. When everyone's left, Kane has stayed behind to help me clean up. As I reach out to grab a piece of trash from the floor, I brush my hand against Kane, who had the same idea. We stare at each other for a couple of seconds. I pull away my hand, but he grabs it, keeping me in place. Hey, he starts in this low murmur. What? I know dressing up doesn't atone to the, for the things I've said to you before, but I hope you can see it. I'm serious about you. His hand stretches across my face, lifting up my chin so I look him in the eye. I'd do anything for you. 
My heart thrums. I love the way he looks at me like that. I know I have forgiven you, Cain. Then I close the distance between us and capture his lips with mine. The sweet essence that is Cain pours right into me, like a drug that I am now addicted to that I could never part with. Cain kisses me back in a gentle manner, like he's showing me how much he cares through his actions. He's usually rough around the edges, but he's got a surprising amount of delicacy hidden within him. I want to explore all sides of Cain, the good and the bad. I'm here for it all. Here. So, okay. Bye. I will, um, I will talk about it, but I won't show you it. I will only give, like, highlights, and I hope that's okay for the person who made this. It just feels wrong to, like, leave it. And... Uh, for in uh, yeah, I'll say that later. Okay, but I will see you soon. Hello. So I actually thought I recorded myself. Um, I thought I recorded myself reacting to the epilogue, but nah, didn't happen. Apparently, it just didn't record. So I'll do it for Dimitri's route, I guess. Less editing for me because I was just gonna edit in little bits while I talked about it. So basically, um. It started off with um, MC Valky. Um, wait, I made notes because I'm organized. Okay, so uh, Kane and Valky, you know, they were texting in bed. Things quickly got spicy. Well, before that, they decided to um, make plans to go see a meteor shower together, which is very on brand for their relationship, obviously. Um, and very quickly devolved into sexting, basically. Um, at one point, um, the main character's like, demanding, aren't you? Miss me that much? And Kane's just like, yeah. Like, wh what I find um, intriguing about him is that um, he's, you know, really like, I guess Sundare, right? He's a Sundare. But um, once you're in a relationship and he's more comfortable, he's just like, more straightforward and I actually really like that about him because it's growth so um so they, they're sexting and then at some point um I'm worried okay it's like I'm worried you think I'm a pervert and I'm just sat there like yeah so is she <laughs> um and then he asks oh do you ever fantasize about me and I'm just sat again I'm sat there like yeah <laughs> she does <laughs> um so they um swap pictures you don't see anything from mc but you'd see you see a reused screenshot from the cabin with kane and then you see like just a sprite with like the turtle head of his penis at the bottom it made me laugh um and then he's like yeah he's basically telling her oh you know, I'm tapping. <laughs> and then she, uh, he asks you to send another selfie so he can, like, finish. And then, um... You get the option. You get, like, the option to just send another selfie. Or the spicy option, which you should always take, um, is to tell him to... and uh, record it. He does this, like... He agrees right away. There's no like, no, I'm shy. He just does it. He's like, um, it's not actually like shown. It's just an again a sprite, but a moving sprite this time, and some noises. Um, okay, and then that's over. You know, he finished. It's over. Although I think the video made her finish. <laughs> whatever it was, whatever. It's awkward to talk about. Okay, so um. Then they go meet up for this meteor shower thing. He does like the cheesy, oh, put his arm around her. Um, and then a condom just falls from his pocket onto the ground. And um, that's a little bit presumptuous, don't you think? Um, but, you know, she's not, he tries to deny it's his, but it's from Boon Mart, so I guess that just means it's his. Um, and she says, she says, oh, I'm on the pill. We don't need to use a condom. And I'm just like, neither of these birth control methods are a hundred percent. Mix them together, and you have a higher chance of not getting pregnant. So you might as well. Like, why are you saying to him, "Oh, we don't need one"? That's to me, that's like misinformation. Even if someone's on the pill, you should still use um, 
a condom, even um, even when you know the other person's a virgin, they don't have an STD, whatever, right? Um, so that that annoyed me a little bit. Um, so yeah, basically they watched the stars for like two seconds and then went back home to doink. Um, what else happened? Oh yeah, they just like went hot and heavy on each other right from the get-go as soon as they get in. And I, I wrote down, you know this is written by a woman as the virgin dude instantly knows where the clearest is. True wish fulfillment. <laughs> it made me laugh. Um, but like, he does like complete after like two seconds of her touching him which you know that's fine and she says it's fine um but i found that to be interesting um oh he yeah he wanted you to beg for it like beg for him to touch you and like you can say no um um and just like basically tell him to do it it just to like keep touching you or whatever and he's like not gonna lie you being bossy is also kind of hot and i was like Right, cool. But then later, when you're actually ab about to do it, he's like, he asks for you to beg it again, and you don't get the chance to say no. She's just like, she's just like, please, and it's just like. But whatever, that's his room, right? I just, it kind of takes away from like the dominant, dominant type of route that you can take, right? Um. Oh, the CG. The CG was good. And I'm going to show you a little bit because it took me by surprise. Uh, is here. White hair, red eyes. I was very surprised when I saw it. I was like, who is this person? And I was like, oh wait. Because I'm so used to seeing her with black hair and green eyes. I was like, who is this person? But no, it's... It's my character. <laughs> and I love white hair and red eyes and um i was just very shocked to see that and i thought it was cool so i thought i'd show it just like a tiny snippet of it it's my, just my character you don't see anything else so you still need to buy the plus content if um if you want to do that well but right before i sh right before i show you i just want to tell you how much this plus content is because the game itself taylor tales is free uh, okay, so I'm. This is, this is gonna be in pounds, so whatever, you know, your rates may vary. Um, but it's basically all two pound for me. Like every like, so all together is like six pound. It's one ninety nine. So round it up, two pound, two pound, two pound. And there's Neil, Dimitri, and Keynes. So six pound for all of it. And if you don't really like a character, you don't have to get the plus content for them. You, it's they're all separate, so you don't have to get them all. So two pound is not that much. Um, that's why I didn't feel bad buying them. Uh, even though it's not a load of content, but it's it's still... You're also still um, helping this person who's creating this stuff. And You know, it's a lot of words. It's a lot of words. And while some people could get by on just, like, praise... Like, I'm writing something right now and I'm not doing it for money because it's going on fucking AO3. So obviously I'm never going to be paid for it. But, um... You know, I, I'm doing it for the praise. The praise is my money. I'm hoping for praise. Uh, you know, I, I just like to... Um, it's nice to help them out, I guess. Um, and since we didn't get to the credits because of the plus content, um, uh, we didn't get to see the cane pick. I love the art at the end of these um, roots. I fucking love it. Um, Neil's was great. And Kane's is no different. It's really good. It's just great. It encompasses Kane. I don't. I don't know if um, Celiana actually does this because it's so different from her art, you know, in the game. But like, it looks really fucking good. It looks really good. It's so good. Um. But yeah, I'm. I'm. I, what can I say about about Kane, right? He's um again, he's still he's still my least favorite. Like I'm sure Dimitri is some people's least favorite. I'm just sure he is because I don't know. He's I I guess in some I, I don't know. I just found his route the nicest, and then Neil and yeah, and then and then Dimitri. 
I don't know about this James character yet. I don't know. Um, but I will... Let's get rid of that. Okay. I will be playing Dimitri next, but I will actually be going on to other games just for a little bit. Just to get a backlog of some other stuff at the same time, so I can start pumping these stuff out. Alright, anyway. Thank you for watching. I do like Kane. Don't get me wrong. I do like Kane. He's just not my favourite. Um, okay, so next we will see Dimitri. Watch out for that.